your first task with the boxes that you've made are to create a non-collided aggregation. Okay. In this non-collided aggregation, we want to express as many of the corner conditions as we possibly can. So you guys have to use all of the pieces that you have. You have, you know, some cube, little cubes, and you've got some rectangular objects, and you've got some big cubes, and two of the the, um, the long bars. Yours are a little longer than these. Okay. So what you guys are going to be doing is putting them together in such a way that you create a composition. All right. This is not a building. All that this is, is a composition of aggregated blocks. Pretend you're like a little kid and you're playing with blocks. Remember the little blocks with the letters on them? Think of it that way, okay? But you're trying to create something that's more sophisticated and interesting than what a child would produce. So here's what I want you guys to do. You're going to try different versions of the aggregation based on um, a system of, of joining things, okay? So the first one that I want you to do is one where you are going to connect, right, the one of your vertical elements to the uh, to one of your long linear elements to another one at a 90 degree angle. So one of them is going to be standing up, the other one's going to be going across. Okay? So you're going to join these together and you can join them together if you want in different ways. You can use your pins if you want to. Um, or you can use these things, the, your, your tape or green tape or whatever other tape you have. Okay, so what I'm going to do is put these two together. So you guys notice that this is creating a crossing, right? And one's going up and one's going across, right? All right, good. So I'm going to put these together like this. And all I'm doing is placing like little pieces of tape, crafting dots, in between the two. I'm going to put one on the bottom also so that it kind of holds together firmly. Sometimes it helps to take this tape and fold it back on itself before you put it into the corner so that it's already kind of creased, right? So, as you can see, it kind of holds together pretty good when I put four pieces of tape. I'm wiggling it pretty good, right? And it'll come loose, but then I can rub the tape some more and it should hold together. Okay, any questions about that? So these long linear elements are, are going to essentially establish the, the framework, the bones of where you're going to put all these other pieces. So the next question comes is, how do I now start to take these pieces and connect them to these? How do I make a composition that's interesting? All right. And so let me ask a question. Does it make, the, based on what I've told you already, does that make sense? Why? It's got a coplanar face. And so you would slide this one back or slide it forward, right? You would avoid creating that coplanar condition, right? And so one of the ways that, I, that you can do this is to express exact repetition. So for example, I could take these pieces and stack them one on top of each other. And I'm having a hard time doing this because it's moving on me in such a way that it's expressing, let me try to keep this together. Ah, part. I'm trying to not tape it is what I'm trying to avoid. So, but I mean, that's one of the things that you can do is to put these all kind of one, two, three, and that creates this expression. So once you have these three on one side, maybe you put these on the other side, matching them, or maybe these connect to these. Or maybe you do them on the opposite side. Okay? So what I want you guys to do is to come up with one of these conditions, one of these aggregated conditions, 
okay, where you utilize all of the pieces with as few coplanar surfaces as you can create, okay? So, and you can stack them up kind of however you'd like. Any questions? No? Okay. Um, I'm going to ask you guys to do this as a physical model first. Okay. So taking the pieces that you currently already have, I want you to kind of take them together. Now, this becomes an important thing that I want you guys to know. What you guys are going to do is you are going to photograph the orthogonal views of this. Okay? So you're going to have to probably set it down on the ground, right? And take a picture straight down. So like I could take this and put it on the floor, right? And I could take a picture straight down so that I'm looking right at it. And then I'm going to take one from the back, the left side, the right side, and the front side. And then I'm going to see if I can get someone to hold it for me and take one from the bottom of it. So there is one, two, three, four, five, six views of this thing. Then in addition to that, you are going to take four more shots from the 45 degree angles from the corners. Okay. All right. Any questions about that? No? All right. I've got it. Then stop the video.